What's up guys and gals, it's the Tyrant here and welcome back to my weekly Q&A session where you guys ask the questions and I give you the answers. If you would like to submit a question to the Q&A, you can do it in the comment section below. You can hit me up on Twitter or you can ask it in the Discord. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Our first question of the week comes from Jedi Spartan. So is that the ultimate Spartan or the ultimate Jedi? Can't decide. But his question is, Halo Q&A with the return of the Halo Infinite trailer showing classic Mark VI Spartan armor, which Covenant species do you think would go back to the original art design? Well, I'm not sure if any of them would, but if I were to pick, um, I would love to see the elites go back to the Halo 1 2 art design or, uh, well, I shouldn't say, or I should say, and the grunts. Those two definitely. I'm actually fine with the way the jackals and the hunters look in the newer versions or the newer series. So, but definitely grunts and elites, I would love to see go back to the original art design. Our next question comes from Supersonic Rocket. That's pretty sweet. And Supersonic Rocket asks, How would you feel if future Halo games had Chief struggling with his own humanity, long dormant emotions, and who he really is? Would you enjoy this kind of story, and do you think it will happen? Uh, knowing 343 it wouldn't surprise me. I would rather see something like that maybe on the TV show, but not really in a game. Uh, and I'm kind of hoping that the Master Chief story ends with this current saga, and if he's going to be in a future game, maybe it takes place in the past. I just don't want them overusing the Chief to the point where he just becomes a cliche if that makes any sense so that's my answer to that and you guys let me know in the comments below if you'd like to know more about the chief and how he really feels or if you just kind of want to keep him as the faceless super soldier that bungie designed him as our next question comes from Adam Cup, and Adam asks, Halo Q&A, do you, Tyrant, do you think Serena could still be alive, that she was found by Cortana and turned into the created? I doubt it, because keep in mind that I think what the Spirit of Fire was in just kind of like in like dormant in space for like, what, 30 years, something like that? And since Smart AI only lasts for like seven, I think Cortana lasted for eight. But they, I mean, she would have been gone long before they were found, long before they came to the Ark, at least in my opinion. So I certainly doubt it, but you guys can let me know in the comments below, is there a chance that somehow Serena got brought back by Cortana? Our next question comes from Razor, Ed Razor Edge Loki 1, and Razor Edge asks, Q&A Tyrant, would you like to see more Halo Wars 2 DLC? I don't think I want to see any more expansions. I really just want to see them focus more on Halo Infinite at this point. Uh, but if they want to add new stuff, like new vehicles and stuff, or uh, perhaps even new heroes, you know, we, we got Sergeant Johnson back. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'd be fine for that. But you guys let me know in the comments below what kind of DLC you'd like to see added to Halo Wars 2 in the future. Our next question comes from Patrick Thomas, and Patrick Thomas asks, Halo Q&A, I like the squad system in Halo 5, but have ideas to improve it for future Halo games by having you select teammates with their, with their own stats, pros, cons, and specialties. Like Locke, for example, has Artemis tracking, allowing him to find collectibles, hidden areas, and highlight weapons on the ground, while his cons are light as a feather, takes 25% more damage from explosives. That sounds more like Mass Effect or uh, an MMO, so I'm not really sure that would work for a Halo game. That actually... Um, I'm not really sure what the question is here. I'll, I'll say this about the squad system. I know that uh, a lot of people out there are sort of on the fence about it. Well, actually, let me take that back. A lot of people just flat out hate it. And, and I can kind of understand that. I actually like the concept of the squad system because I always like having buddies with you. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I originally enjoyed Halo, or one of the reasons why, because it was the first time where you actually had, like, factions, and it wasn't just you versus the world, which I really enjoyed. But the way it was implemented in Halo 5 really wasn't that great. I I mean, your AI were as dumb as rocks. And, you know, quite frankly, I think that it definitely made it more difficult to enjoy the story because there was no character development with any of those people. So having said that, I think that they could do a better job. I'd like the idea of being able to choose your own teammates, uh, at least for aesthetics. So, like, you could have the Arbiter and maybe, you know, Buck or uh, also Locke if you wanted to do that. So, I mean, that the, being able to choose, I'm all for, but the stats thing seems like it would be even, no, no offense, but it, I think it would be worse than what is currently implemented. But that's just my opinion. You guys let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the squad system. I mean, would, would you like a stats-based squad system? Would you like a uh no squad system or are you fine with the current one and our final question of the week our star question comes from luigi five 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 that's one eight hundred no i'm just kidding and luigi asked q a what is the perfect halo map you can think of you know it's funny so for the longest time my favorite halo map was sidewinder 
uh, back in Halo Combat Evolved, you know, I know everyone loves Blood Gulch, and that's fine, especially with Red versus Blue. Uh, and I love Blood Gulch, but, you know, after a while, I'd always get tired of the desert scenery, you know? I, but, you know, I go to Sidewinder, and it's got this big snow-based setting, and it was just so pretty. I mean, this, the, the deep blue sky against, you know, the snow and the ice... And it was such a big map, too. I mean, it was a big horseshoe shape, which I thought was kind of interesting. And you had lots of different ways that you could get across. I mean, you could obviously use vehicles, but you had to be careful because of the ice. Or you could also get across using the, uh, the tunnels inside the map. And if you were smart, you could even pass, like if you're playing Capture the Flag, you could actually pass the flag uh, in the middle of the map, which was pretty cool. I think that's not the same. Well, no, it is with, with Halo PC. P Halo PC added uh, additional teleports. You could also use the cliffs to get from one side to another, which was funny because when I played on Halo PC, uh, not many people knew that because they were coming, I guess they were coming from the Xbox version, a lot of the folks playing Halo PC. And so they didn't know that those teleports had been added so when i was at, whenever i was playing ctf on sidewinder i'd always use those and i would never be stopped and which i thought was hilarious and they also added the fuel rod gun uh to that map too as well as to the game in general and so if someone was chasing me i'd like to hide behind one of the teleporters and <laughs> let them run past roadrunner wily e. coyote style and just start hammering them with the fuel rod gun it was so much fun uh but then halo 3 came along and Halo 3 to this day is still my favorite Halo game, and uh, you know the initial maps they came out with were fantastic. I know a lot of people still wanted Blood Gulch, even though Valhalla is very similar to Blood Gulch. Uh, but we had Valhalla. Uh, it's still an excellent map in its own right. And of course, added other awesome maps like Guardian and uh, you know, uh, I, I think Construct is the name of it. I, yeah, okay, so Guardian and Construct, two of my favorite uh, small, uh, like 4v4 maps on there as well in the pit. I mean, who can forget the pit, right? But to me, the second map pack they released is my favorite one because it contains two excellent maps. The first is Blackout, which is essentially a nighttime Arctic version of Lockout that's a lot more colorful than the original Lockout. It plays the same, but it looks a lot better, which I thought was really cool. But my favorite map that they released, period, and of all time in all of Halo is Avalanche because it's it's basically a reimagining of Sidewinder. They even added snow-based vehicles or, or snow-colored vehicles to add to it, and it was just so well done. I mean, the the map itself was massive. Uh, they added new tunnels and new uh, man cannons in there instead of portals and teleporters. And so that was really awesome. But I mean, just the overall design of it was great. I mean, you could have vehicular combat uh, in the in the outer part, you know, the U-shaped part, or you could have in the in the in the internal area where where you used to have the tunnels in Sidewinder. You could have your teams going through that way, trying to get through from point A to point B on foot. And a lot of awesome combat scenarios would result from that. So you know, to this day, Avalanche is my favorite. In fact, when they when they were talking about El Dorito, you know, the the Halo three PC thing. Uh, they technically added Avalanche, but they changed the scenery and called it Dino, or Diamondback. And I wasn't impressed. I mean, it plays exactly the same way, but we're back to the desert look. And I'm just like, no, that's what Blood Gulch is for. That's what Blood Gulch should always be. It's sort of a, a desert, uh, even though it has some grass and trees in it, but it's mostly a sort of a desert type setting. And why would you do that to Sidewinder? The, one of the reasons why I loved Sidewinder in the original is because it was something different. It was something, it was something unique. And so when Avalanche came along, it was basically an enhanced version of Sidewinder, and I did not want to see them change that to Diamondback. But from my understanding, they actually, for Halo 5, a lot of people have used the advanced, advanced Forge mode to create a new version of Avalanche, which is fantastic. I haven't played it yet, but I'd certainly like to. And maybe it's something I'll look, you know, I'll look more into as, as time goes on. But for me, at least, Avalanche is my favorite Halo map of all time. I, I love the way it plays. If I could play any, if, if I could only choose one multiplayer Halo map to play from here on out, it would definitely be Avalanche. So I want you guys to do this for me. Today, I want you to tell me what your favorite Halo map is of all time and why you love that map. It could be from any Halo game. Uh, it can even be one of the maps that was added to Halo PC or even Halo 2 Vista. But you guys let me know in the comments below what is the most memorable Halo map to you and tell me about some of your experiences on it. What did you like about it? What, what struck you? 
uh, the first time you played it that made you just say, wow, I, I could play this map forever. I want to hear your stories and your favorite Halo map in the comments section below, or please feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at Mythic Tyrant. A link to my Twitter feed can be found in the description below. And I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy day to sit down and watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you consider subscribing for more great content right here on MythicTyrant.com. Thank you guys and gals so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. I'll catch you all right back here next time. And as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.